Yeah, we're optimistic that uh, inserting the individual mandate repeal would, would be helpful. And uh, that's obviously the, um, the view of the Senate Finance Committee Republicans as well. All right, the health care's back. Uh, that was Senate Majority Leader announcing a plan to include a repeal of the individual mandate to help pay for the Senate tax reform bill. It comes just a day after President Trump called for the move. Joining us now from Capitol Hill, member of the both the Senate Intelligence and Appropriations Committees, Republican Senator James Lankford of Oklahoma. Thank you very much for being on the show this morning. Uh, yeah, glad to be with you. Good morning. Is this going to make it more difficult to get this passed now with the health care element? I, I, I don't think it will, actually. You have pretty strong agreement among Republicans that uh, we don't like the individual mandate. And the reason is it's a tax put directly on people that can afford it the least. In my state, in Oklahoma, 81 percent of the people that pay the individual mandate tax make less than $50,000 a year. So this is a tax that was intended to push people to be able to buy the product, but it's actually landed on people that can afford it the least. So we're trying to repeal it. It doesn't take away the subsidies. Individuals can still get on it. They can still get full subsidies. All those things change. Change, but we remove that tax penalty for people that actually can't afford it. Mm. Sam Stein. Senator, um, two questions actually on the bill. Um, one is, the, as I understand it, uh, the corporate tax cuts in the Senate bill will be permanent. But the individual tax cuts will expire after 10 years for purposes of uh, satisfying uh, procedural elements that require that you can't have uh, past 10 years. Why should corporate tax cuts be permanent, but individual tax cuts lapse after 10 years? This is very similar to what happened in 2001. You'll remember in 2011, uh, there was a renewal of that tax because in 2001, Congress <coughs> did the same thing. Uh, did it sure. through reconciliation. Those, all, those rates were all extended in 2011 then for the individuals. So you imagine that these have... individual rates will be extended after 10 years? I would hope that they would actually. Okay. Those would stay very consistent. The corporate which brings rate, the corporations me to my have to plan question, in which advance. Is you, you've warned against the concerns about the debt and deficit as recently as your Meet the Press appearance. If you extend right. the individual rates past the 10 year window and if the corporate rates uh, remain reduced permanently, how does that satisfy your concerns about rising debt and deficit if those tax rates will, past the 10 year window, continue uh, for as far as the eye can see? Sure. Yeah, I've actually brought up the issue of debt and deficit not as recently as Meet the Press, but as recently as yesterday with all of my colleagues. This is extremely important that we actually focus in on this. Ten years from now, we'll have a very different look of what's happening and where we are with uh, economic growth. We'll have the opportunity to be able to evaluate it and be able to make the decision at that time. Companies have to plan in advance. You can't, you can't guess what the tax rate's going to be in a couple of years. If you do, you just pull back and you don't invest. That means jobs don't go. That means you don't have growth in the economy. That means people don't have higher wages. So we've got to create some sort of permanency for those people that have to plan ahead. We'll evaluate the economy 10 years from now on whoever's in the House and the Senate at that point and have to be able to evaluate it. But we do have to have a growing economy and consistent spending or we're never going to get on top of the debt and deficit. So, Mike. Senator, repeal of the individual mandate, is it politics or economics? That's part A of the question. And part A, one of the, uh, part A, one of the, uh, the question is uh, the SALT aspect, state and local tax revenues. What's the status of that within the Senate bill? So let me take that in reverse on it. The state and local taxes in the Senate bill are not uh, agreed to at all. Uh, we set those completely aside. I know the House uh, actually took the state and local tax and said we're not going to agree to state income tax, uh, local taxes, but we will allow the property tax to be in there. This will be a negotiating point that will happen between the House and the Senate during the conference committee. Uh, would it be possible that uh, the uh, property tax gets included back in that in the negotiations? Yes, it's entirely possible. Uh, but we want to be able to set this out as a parameter and be able to go into negotiations over the Thanksgiving holiday time and be able to determine where we go. Uh, as far as the politics or the economics of the um, individual mandate, I think it's a little bit of both, actually. Uh, clearly, people around the country that are paying this fine uh, that make less than $50,000 each year, it's economics for them personally. Uh, they want to be able to get rid of this. There is a political aspect, as there is everything in this town, to be able to say to people, we're making progress in the Affordable Care Act in some of the parts that are the most toxic to individuals. This is one of the parts that's most toxic to individuals. Again, it doesn't remove the subsidies from anyone that chooses to take them, but it does remove the fines yeah, from people that can't afford them. But the, the, the estimates are that the because you're going to have fewer healthy people mm. in these exchanges because they're not compelled to buy insurance by the mandate, that they will be stuck with sicker people and then insurers will have to raise premiums. They estimated by 10 percent. 
Are you comfortable with a bill that would facilitate a jacking up of premiums in these markets by 10% in order to have a permanent corporate tax cut? I'm not. I, I am looking at all the aspects of it. Uh, again, those estimates of people saying if you don't have the mandate, people aren't going to buy the product. Right now, people that are getting the subsidies are on the product. Uh, they're all, all receiving that. People that can't afford it, they don't want to also pay the fine. So you've got to make a decision for both individuals. Are we going to talk about for the government as a whole? Are we can talk about those individuals uh, that are harmed by this. A again, 81% of the people that pay this fine in my state <coughs> less, make less than 50000 They cannot afford the insurance, and they can also not afford the fine. They're looking for some way to be able to get insurance and actually have it, not just have a fine and still have no insurance. Senator, uh, before you go, we'd love to hear your views on the situation with Roy Moore, especially as uh, new information seems to be developing by the hour. Right. Yeah, obviously incredibly sad for the, those uh, girls that were affected uh, during that time period, their families, and sad for the people of Alabama and for the nation. Uh, people of Alabama are having to make a decision on someone who uh, had immoral behavior uh, or someone that they don't like their politics on, and they're in this really difficult spot to be able to go back and forth. Should he what step I would out of the race? Is, I, I do believe that he should, actually, and should give the people of Alabama a better choice to be able to go through this next process so they can make that decision. I am pleased to be able to see that the nation, though, is talking about moral issues and trying to hold leaders to a higher account. That's a positive thing for our nation, and I think that should continue, whether that's in Hollywood uh, with all the harassment that's being exposed now or whether it's on Capitol Hill, mm -hmm. in, in media, anywhere that it may be. Uh, if Americans hold each other to a higher standard, that is helpful to us long term. Painful in the process of going through it but helpful long term because we want to set a higher yep. standard for our kids. Couldn't agree with you more. I'm hoping this is a transformational moment. Senator James Langford, thank you very much. Thank you. And early yesterday we